Hi there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at higher order functions in JavaScript. Now, higher order functions are simply a function that either takes another function in as an argument or returns another function. In order to understand this, we first should understand the concept of first class functions. So let me switch over to Firefox here, and I'm on the MDM documentation site. And they have a definition here for first class function. A programming language is said to have a first class function when functions in that language are treated like any other variables. For example, a function can be passed as an argument to other functions, it can be returned by another function, or it can be assigned as a variable. And they actually have some pretty good examples right below here to show what they're talking about. So the first one is assigning a function as a variable. So you see here, we're defining a constant called foo. So this is a variable. And this variable is being assigned this function which simply does a console log. And then if you want to actually invoke this function here that's being defined, you could actually invoke it using the variable name foo that we defined above. So you see here, we're using foo and then we're calling the function here. Let's take a look at passing the function as an argument. So in this case, we define a function here called say hello, and it just returns the string hello. And then we pass this function here as an argument to the greeting function, which we define below here. So you see that say hello here is being passed down here where they're calling the greeting function. So you see say hello is being passed in as an argument. And then you see that this parameter here, hello message, which is used throughout here, is getting assigned the value of say hello, which is defined above. Now that's a little tricky the way they wrote that, but essentially what's happening is we're passing this function into another function here as an argument. And then the last example here is just returning a function. So you can see here we have another function defined, say hello, and this time our return statement is actually returning another function. So those are three examples of why functions are first class in JavaScript. Now that we understand that functions can be used in all these different ways, we can understand what a higher order function is in JavaScript. One of the easiest examples to get started is to use the add event listener function in JavaScript to handle a click event. So let's take a look at doing that in our browser real quick. I'm going to right click on the Firefox logo here and I'm gonna inspect the element. Now this will pop up all the HTML that's being used to serve up this page. I'm just going to expand this a little bit. And you'll see here we have a div item and it has the class of logo. If I hover over this, you see that it highlights the logo above in the screen. So I'm going to copy this class name. And if I go over to my console, I can run a document dot get elements by class name on this logo class here. Now, if you were to simply run this, what's actually returned is not the specific element I selected. It's an array of elements that potentially have that class name. Since classes are designed to be used in multiple places, JavaScript has to be open to return multiple values for those elements. So let me just show you what that looks like. If I return that, you see that there's this HTML collection. You see there's only one item in here, so this div with the class logo here, and you can see that it's our Firefox logo. But you'll notice that this has a key of zero. So if we want to actually get the specific element here, in case there were multiple of these using the logo class, we actually have to come and specify it like this. So I'm going to put a zero, and you'll notice now that we're actually getting that HTML element with the logo class. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's run a function called add event listener. And now this event listener that we're looking for is the click event. And then we're going to pass a function here. And our function is going to simply alert that I have clicked the logo. And then we'll close our function and we'll close the bracket here for our add event listener function here. And let's just run this. And now if I come up here and I were to click on this logo, you'll see that it says I have clicked the logo. So we've actually used a higher order function here. So add event listener is a higher order function because it takes this other function, which is just an anonymous function that sends an alert. It takes it as an argument here. And let me just zoom in so you can actually see what I'm doing here in case this was a little hard to see. So we're getting the logo class. We're getting the first element there, which is our logo up here, that Firefox logo. 
Then we're adding a listener that handles the click event. And then that is returning this function, which just alerts that I have clicked the logo. And that's the behavior we're seeing here. So maybe you've seen code like this in some of the projects that you've worked on or some of the other tutorials you've seen online. So you may be kind of familiar with the idea of passing functions in as arguments to other functions, but maybe you're not really comfortable with the idea of returning other functions. So let's go through another example to show how that might work. I'm going to flip over here to VS Codium. Let's start with the example where we check the age of a person to determine if they have access to a certain type of activity. So for instance, I'm going to create a new function here and I'm going to call this can drive a car and this function will take an age parameter. And then inside here, I will put an if statement that says if age is greater than or equal to 16, that's where you can get a license where I'm from, then we're going to return true. And if the age is not greater than 16, then we'll just return false. Okay, so let's hop down here and let's run this. We'll do a console.log and we'll say can drive a car and we'll pass an age of 15. So this person should not be able to drive a car. Let's just save that and let's open up our console here. And so I'll just run the higher order functions.js file. That's the name of our file that we've named it here on our desktop. And so I'll just run that and 15 returns false. So 15 is not old enough to drive the car. Now let's just do another test here and let's say 17 and we'll save that. And let's run this again. So true. So if you're 17 years old, you are old enough to drive a car. Great. So now we can simplify some of this. So Instead of doing this if statement where we check the age right here and then we return true, and if the age is less than 16, then we return false, we can actually simplify this bit of code. So I can come in here and we can get rid of all this here and we can actually just come in and we can just return age greater than or equal to 16 directly here. So when we run it like this, what's actually happening is this is evaluating this expression. It's saying, is the age greater than or equal to 16? If it is, the value will be true, so we'll return true. And if it's not, then the value will be false and we'll return false. So let's just save that. Let's just run this again to show. So currently we're passing in the age of 17. That should be true. Let's come back down here and let's run that. You'll see that we're still getting the value of true. Now let's come up here and let's put the age of six in here. And let's save that and run this one more time. So false, so six years old is not old enough to drive a car. Okay, so now we could replicate this kind of function for other different kinds of tests. So for instance, I can come and I could paste this and I could say, can rent a car and the age for renting a car is 25. So I'll save that. And now we can test that. So let's just say, can rent a car and let's do a couple different tests here. So. So can rent a car at six years old, at 16, and 26. So according to our logic, six is less than 25, 16 is less than 25, and 26 is greater than 25. So this should be false, false, true. Let's save that and let's see what happens when we run it. We get false, false, true. So this is working. And then let's maybe make one more scenario here and just say, can drink beer. So in the States, you need to be 21 years old to be able to drink alcohol. So I'm gonna save that and let's come down here. And again, let's just test this. Can you drink beer at six? No, you cannot. Can you drink beer at 60? Yes, you can. Okay, so false and true, perfect. Now you might notice that this seems kind of repetitive. We're defining the same type of logic over and over again, where we're setting up this expression to evaluate each time, and we're really just changing the number that we're passing here. So we could make use of higher order functions in this case, 
to compose these in a way that's a little more elegant and a little less repetitive. So let's just come back up here. And for now, I'm going to comment this all out. And then I'm going to come here and I'm actually going to create a new function called required age. And this will take a parameter called required age. And this will simply return an anonymous function that will take an age parameter as well. And in that function, we will just return age is greater than or equal to required age. Okay, now this may be a little confusing at first, but bear with me, this will make sense in just a second. In this case, the required age function is a higher order function because it's returning another function inside of it. Now let's see how this makes our life easier in practice. So we want to now be able to replicate this idea of creating different required ages. So the age that's required to drive a car, the age that's required to rent a car, and the age that's required to be able to drink beer in the United States. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to use another implementation of our first class functions. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to name our first variable can drive a car. And this variable is just going to equal the required age function. And we're going to specify that the age to drive a car is 16. Now we can do something similar down here. We can create another variable and we're gonna say can rent a car. And the required age to do that is 25. And then we'll do one last one and we'll do can drink beer and we'll say the required age here is 21. And now that we have those defined, let me just explain quickly what's happening here. So we're assigning these variables on the left-hand side, the return value of the required age function because we're calling that and passing it an argument. So in the first case, we're passing the argument of 16, then 25, and then 21. And once we call these functions, they return another function here. So this variable gets the value of this function. Now this function has not been called yet. This function is simply being returned since we know that we can do that with first class functions in JavaScript. So once we have these variables assigned, we can then call them as if they were functions. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to console.log and I'm going to put the can drive a car variable and I'm going to pass an example age. So I'm gonna pass six in this case. And I'll save that. Now, if I were to come down here, I'm gonna clear my back scroll. If I were to run this, so six years old is not old enough to drive a car. And let's just do another example here. And we'll put this here and we'll put 16. And now since 16 is greater than or equal to so 16, this age, greater than or equal to the required age, 16, then this should be true. So I'm gonna save that, come back down here, run that. So now we have the first one's false, the second one's true. So in case this isn't clear, let me go through what's actually happening here one more time. So at first what we're doing is we're defining the rules for the required ages of these different activities. And we're doing that by passing an argument to the required age function here. So in the case of driving a car, we're passing 16 up here to required age. And then that's returning a function here and it's being assigned to this variable and it's sitting in this variable until we call it from this variable. Now down here, we're calling that variable by, you can tell we're calling it because it has these little parentheses here and we're passing a new argument six. So this number six here is getting passed into this function as age right here. Since this function was what was returned and assigned inside this variable. So that value six goes in as age, and then six is used in this evaluation of the greater or equal to, and six is greater than or equal to the required age, which was passed previously. 
So we passed 16 previously to drive a car here. You can see we did that. We passed 16 up here previously. And this is actually using a concept of a closure to get the access to the scope that was passed previously here. We have another video on closures. If you're interested, please check that out. But essentially, this 16 here is being used on the other side of the evaluation for the required age. And then we're doing that again when we call this can I drive a car function again. So we already have the required age scoped to 16. And we pass a new variable in here. Again, we're passing 16 this time. We can actually have the 16 come in as the age. And then this time it checks is 16 greater than or equal to 16. That returns true. So this evaluates to true. I know that's a lot to cover but I promise you that these are used all over the place in JavaScript. So you're going to be exposed to these and as you get a little more familiar and you see a couple different examples in your real life, I'm sure this will be clarified a little bit more. Let's just extend this example a little bit further to hopefully take this point home. So I'm gonna come here, I'm going to remove the console.logs here and I'm going to add an array here. So I'm going to call it people and it's just going to be an array. Now inside this array, there's going to be a bunch of objects and I'm going to give each object a name. First one, I'll just give my own name and I'm going to give an age. So I'm 32. And I'm just going to copy this and I'll make a couple examples here. So we'll give this next one. We'll call us Paul and Paul is 50 and then we'll say Sarah is 12 and we'll say Casey is 21 Felix is 26 and Jared is 87. So I'm going to save that. And now what we could do is we could actually come in here and we could loop over all these people and we could check if they can do different types of activities. So let's come down here and I'll just add a semicolon there. Let's do a for each loop here and we're going to use the people array. So we're going to do for the people for each of those let's get a person and then let's do something for each of those people so if you're not familiar with this type of syntax essentially we're grabbing our array here so our array has each one of these items and each one of these items is on a different line so that's the first item that's the second item for instance and then we're saying for each of those items we're going to assign it temporarily as person so this becomes the first person. The second time it runs through here, we get this second person, Paul. Then the third time we get Sarah and so on. So once we have each person, we can run operations on them. So we could say, if can drive a car, and then we're going to pass the current person's age. So we get that person object here and we, we say age. So if a person can drive a car, so for the first time it's going to go through, it's gonna have the gym row here it's going to get the age out of this. So it's going to pass the value 32 to can drive a car. So if the person can drive a car, then we're going to say, let's just do a console log here. Console log, and we'll say the person dot name. So in this case, since the first row it's going through, it's gonna say Jim. So it's gonna get the name out of here. Jim can drive a car. Okay. And then we could do something similar down here for some other things here. So instead of can drive a car, let's do rent a car. And instead of can drive a car, let's say can rent a car. And let's do it one more time in here. and say, can drink beer.
drink beer. Okay, let's save that. And let's just come down here. I'm gonna clear my back scroll and let's run this now. And now you see that there's a printout of what all the different people can do. You can tell by the ages that we have here. So since I'm 32, I can do all the activities here. I can drive a car, I can rent a car, and I can drink a beer. So you see that Jim can drive a car, can rent a car, can drink a beer. Paul, now Paul is 50, so Paul can do all the activities as well. Paul can drive a car, Paul can rent, uh, rent a car and drink a beer. Now, Sarah can't do any of the activities, can't drive, can't rent, and can't drink, so Sarah doesn't even appear here. And let's see, Casey, so Casey is 21, so Casey can drive the car and have a beer, but can't rent a car yet, so you see Casey can only drive and drink. And then Felix can do all the activities, so all three, and Jared can do all three as well. So maybe we want some of these people to fall more within those different parameters, so let's see here. Let's just change this so Jared is 16. So Jared should only be able to drive the car. And let's move Paul to 22. So Paul should be able to drive a car and have a beer. And let's just run this one more time. So you notice that this updates for those values. Now, if you're a keen observer, you might notice something else that's happened here. So we're using this for each function, and it might be a little hard because my autocomplete used the arrow function syntax right out of the box, but what we're doing here as an argument of for each, we're actually passing a function that does stuff. So based on what we've learned previously, this for each function is actually a higher order function itself. Now, there are a lot of higher order functions that work on arrays, just like for each does, that take a function as an argument here. Some of the popular ones are map, and there's filter, and the opposite of filter, reject, and there's reduce, and sort, among others. So now we're not going to go over these individually in this video because I think it's a big enough topic to go over in a separate video. And I think you've covered enough ground today looking at some of these other examples. So hopefully that helps you wrap your head around the basics of what a higher order function is and you have some tools in your back pocket that allow you to go about understanding how other people have used higher order functions and how to actually implement these in your own code. Thanks for watching the video. If this was helpful, please give the video a thumbs up just so YouTube knows to share this with other folks who are interested in this type of content. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you with an answer. Thanks for watching and take care.